Stay in the coaching. Now, let me tell you something, <laughs> Dabo. You want no part of this broadcasting business. It is a rough, <laughs> torturous place. You're good. You're great. Oh, you're perfect man. where you are, where you're doing your coaching thing, man. Uh, listen, uh, you are always a trip on that spring game. Uh, in fact, I was kidding. Mac Brown was on the show last week, and they had their practice on on the tube this weekend. I said, Mac, Dabo has, has lifted the bar to this. So, you know, the dude got the mic. <laughs> The, the announcers might as well just going home. Dabo had a three-hour infomercial. So Max said, you know, Dabo's my guy, but, man, he, he's, ta- he's tough to beat with a microphone in his hand. So I, I'm glad your voice has come back at least to have this interview today. Yeah, good to be with y'all, man. Hope y'all are good. Been a while since I've been with y'all. Now, it has been a while. All right, so what did we learn from the spring game and really the spring practice? I know Everybody talks about the game, but it's really – that's just a – Small slice of the pie. What did you learn about your football team this spring? Yeah, that's a spring game. It's fun. You know, the best part about the spring game is it, is it allows you to kind of create an environment for some guys that, you know, like a Wesco, for example, who the first time they play a college game, it's, it's, it's you know, the real deal. No scrimmages, no nothing. Uh, but the main thing is, is, you know, we had 127 guys go through spring. So, you know, the majority of our team is here. And I would say the main thing that we learned is, you know, we've got the ingredients. We just got a lot of work to do. Uh, but I think we've got an eager group. Uh, they've got some good self-awareness. We've got uh, good leadership on both sides. I think we've got a chance to, to be strong, you know, up the middle, if you will, uh, in the trenches. And, uh, you know, we've gotten some guys back from injury. And, yeah, we, we've got a chance. This is a, a team that I think carries some momentum from the – we had a little five-game winning streak, and we were in a, in, a, in a mess there. And, man, these guys played some good football down the stretch and culminated with a great bowl win and a game-winning drive. And I think that's kind of fueled these guys into the, into the spring. But uh, we got the ingredients. We just got to put it all together and, and uh, have a great summer to, so that we can kind of take the next step uh, in this year's journey. Yeah, Coach, if you're going to mention that bowl game, you still owe me a green leather jacket. You know that, right? <laughs> oh, that was you? That oh, was me. Man, I'm sorry. No, it's yeah. okay. We took it to the dry cleaners. It's good to go. So, since you mentioned a name that I know coming off spring, people are going to be talking about because that's what we do around here. Bryant Wesco, and he had a great touchdown in the game, and I know he comes in with high expectations. You've seen him a ton behind closed doors, too, in your <clears> practices. <throat> what have you gained from watching him that, that obviously you knew he was a good player but seeing him now in your uniform and in your colors yeah I mean he's you know you get these guys in here as freshmen you never really know exactly where they are till till you start coaching them and some guys you know you come in and you see the talent right away but maybe the maturity and even the commitment is not quite where it needs to be uh, but he's a kid like from day one you know, the commitment is, is, is above the talent, and it just drives everything. I mean, he's, he's very conscientious. Um, he can take things from the meeting room to the practice field. He's still developing a little physically. He's already put on about eight or nine pounds, and he's still going to be a developing guy between now and August. But, um, you know, he just took right to it. And then he had a lot of opportunity because, uh, you know, Cole Turner was out. He, he had a couple, of, you know, he's – was out most of spring Tyler Brown you know he was out all of spring uh Adam was able to finish spring but he missed a big portion of the middle so that really created a lot of opportunity for Wesco and man he took advantage of it and really showed that he's a guy that can play and he's definitely going to be a guy that's going to help us and so he's just got to carry it into the summer you know take another step from a uh, a playbook standpoint and being able to play more than one spot uh, but we're really excited about him. I mean, he's a, he's a really good player. And, and for the first time in a while, we got some guys coming back that, that you know, we feel like are proven. I mean, we love how uh, Tyler Brown, you know, had a freshman All-American year. Antonio was out all last year getting him back. Cole Turner was out all last year getting him back. Adam Randall kind of refound his – his confidence and, and really finished the season last year well. Salado, first time that he's played since he's been at Clemson. He's had all kind of injuries. Um, you know, he's a kid that really showed up and, and did some good stuff for us as well. 
So we, we really like our group. And now you add in Wesco. We got a kid named TJ Moore coming this summer. Uh, Noble Johnson, hopefully you can get in that mix. Uh, Mice and Kelly, uh, Tink, Ronan Hannafin. We feel like we've got the depth, competition, talent, and the numbers at that position to be a, a, a really deep and, and you know formidable group this fall. Coach, I was out in Phoenix because uh, I hated I missed the all-in ball, which we'll get to. Uh, so I, I go to ESPN Plus because I want to watch the spring game. And the timing always good on the West Coast. Watch those early spring games on the East Coast. And I was thinking, all right, I want to see this Sammy Brown dude, is if he's going to make some plays. It, it lasted all of about three seconds <laughs> until Sammy Brown made his presence known. And I went, wow, where did that blur come from? Uh, listen, I know you got some dudes at linebacker, and you're going to lose one or two to the next level. But, man, Sammy Brown, uh, it did not take long for folks to understand, oh, I get it now. He, he looks like he's going to be a dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's going to help us. I mean, I, I would say he's a guy that, like Wesco, very committed, very mature. Uh, but, you know, honestly, he struggled a little bit this spring just – you know, playing my middle linebacker, that's like playing quarterback. I mean, that is a really, really tough position. So, you know, he's a guy, if you if you really, you know, know about him, he really played about every snap, running back, linebacker. So, you know, his learning curve was a little steeper uh, in what we're asking him to do. And I think he, he, he took advantage and just got better and better and better all throughout the spring. Um uh, Easy guy to notice because he can run. He's strong as an ox. Uh, this guy's a state weightlifting champ, state wrestling champ. Like I said, played every snap at running back, linebacker, just a, uh, a, a great, you know, football player. Uh, but it's been awesome because he's got some, you know, I mean, uh, Barrett Carter and, and, and Wade Woodass, going to be hard to find two better guys than those guys, I think, in the country. These are two special players. And that's been good for Sammy to have some guys to learn from. Uh, but not just Sammy. You know, Sammy, I think, showed he's a guy that's going to be able to help us. But, man, D. Creighton took a step forward. Jamal Anderson, as you saw in the video, he took a step forward. Kobe McLeod uh, mm -hmm. took a step forward. So we, we developed a pretty good little group. But, you know, we've got to, to bring those guys along because, you know, Wade and and uh, Barrett, we know who they are and, and, and what they're all about and starters for us. But uh, we got to get those young guys, you know, up to up to speed pretty quickly. So I'm glad Sammy was able to come in and get a spring under his belt. Got great hair, too. Oh, Sammy Brown. You can notice him out there by the hair, too. I, it's going to be weird not seeing Will Shipley out there. I know that's going to be different, but his running mate, Phil Maffa, obviously had a great year last year, including in the bowl game against Kentucky. I know you're expecting big things from him this year. What are you asking of Phil Maffa moving forward and what you anticipate he can do in a jump to this next year? Yeah, you know, assume the role of, of you know, being that guy. I mean, he's, he's going to play, you know, more snaps than he's ever played, so he's got to be in the best condition that he's ever been in. Uh, you know, we've kind of had that one-two punch with he and Shipley, and now there's, you know, a, a real battle for uh, it was him and Shipley, it was who was going to run out there first. Now mm -hmm. it's, you know, Maffa is established as the guy. We kind of got some competition for that, for that second and third spot. But, you know, he's got to set the tone and he's got to become the leader. You know, he's got to find his voice a little bit and really assert that this summer. We need that from him. And then just being in, you know, elite condition, the best shape he's ever been in. Because like I said, he's going to play, he's going to play more snaps you know, than he's had to play in the past. But he's built for it. He's excited about it. Uh, he had a really good spring. He's in a really good place, uh, especially how he finished the season. So I'm, I'm excited about, you know, him him having the opportunity to to be an every-down player for us. And uh, I, think, I think you can expect a big season from uh, number seven. Coach, it's not very often you go 10 minutes into an interview and nobody's asked you about your quarterback. So I, so I guess I will. Uh, the, what you've seen with Cade Klubnick this spring, because obviously Trent Pierman put on a show in the spring game and got people buzzing. Of course, you've been telling everybody, Hey, we, I got three quarterbacks here. I know I could win with Pierman was really good in the spring game, but what did you see with Cade Klubnick this spring that you feel like, Hey, maybe the game is slowing down for him? everything. I mean, he had a heck of a spring. Uh, you know, he's very accurate. We had, 
Uh, a lot of a lot of great you know plays down the field this spring. I thought he he developed a lot of chemistry you know with our core, uh, and I'm talking about tight ends, uh, receivers, backs. I mean, just a complete command of what we're doing offensively. Uh, and just, you know, really has grown from what he did last year. You know, he didn't throw many interceptions. Uh, that's a positive, but we, we, we turned the ball over too much. I mean, he, you know, he had, he had too many fumbles. He took too many sacks. And, you know, but that's just a part of being a first-year starter. This is a very, very talented and, and an elite, skilled kid. Um, and it was fun to see. I just thought, you know, the game just really slowed down for him. He was very consistent all throughout the spring. And um, I think when we get you know everything around him, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a heck of a year for him. He's he's, I think he's just going to keep be- getting better and better. And the biggest thing, as I said earlier, you know the way he finished, you know with a five game winning streak, uh, made some big big plays in big games, and none bigger than the game winning drive in the bowl game. So he's very confident, and I just think you know he's one of those guys that is going to continue to progress. This is a developmental game, and he's, again, a very, very talented player. You look around the country last year, the best quarterbacks were were guys that had gained a lot of experience, you know, some six-year guys, some fifth-year guys. And, you know, know, Cade is coming off his second year, first-year starter, uh, and I think think he's just going to continue to progress. So excited about it. And and in all of our quarterbacks, you know, we we didn't go and take a kid out of the portal because – we really believe in the guys that we have here. And, uh, you know, Chris Vizina, uh, this is another high-level player, very, very talented. And same thing, I mean, he made great strides this spring. I mean, just watching him every single day, you know, he was a guy last year that got very few reps because we knew we were going to redshirt him. So all the reps went to Hunter Helms and to Paul Tyson. And so he mostly just kind of watched. So this spring, he got the opportunity to really get – all these two reps, and, man, he made big strides. This is a big, strong kid, and so we're excited about, you know, him as a redshirt freshman. And then you mentioned Trent. I mean, Trent's uh, going on his third year here. He's very savvy. Uh, He doesn't have great size. He doesn't have an elite arm, but he's a baller, you know. He's just a kid that knows how to play the game, and and he has good timing, good anticipation with what he does, and, again, has great knowledge in what we're doing and just a guy that's going to keep – you know, getting better and better, and a guy that could definitely go win for us uh, if we need him. So I'm really proud of Trent. And then we still got Paul Tyson, who's kind of a student coach, but he's kind of our in our back pocket as our emergency fourth guy if we needed him. So we yeah, like our got, group. We, yeah, he's got wheels, too. You saw on that touchdown run. That was a nice little touchdown run. And the celebration afterwards, too. I, I was with you guys last spring, and – I remember seeing Garrett Riley before our meetings. He was still moving into his office upstairs. I know his wife was there, and she had just gone to Home Goods and just trying to get it decorated because it was a whirlwind, right? So now that this spring he's there, maybe feels a lot more comfortable, what have you seen from your offensive coordinator and and the steps he's taken now this time around? Yeah, I would say just that. He's just just really settled in, very comfortable, uh, knows our players, um, you know, we've got you know, this time last year, I think we had one scholarship player go through the spring. So uh, that was a, a, a challenge for him with a lot of guys out and hurt and so forth. But uh, it's been really good. I think he's more comfortable. Uh, all the staff, everybody's settled in. Obviously, Matt Luke coming in. I think that's been a, uh, a great addition uh, for him as well. And, uh, you know, just kind of just like your quarterback, you just take another step. Uh, and, and he's, he's a very talented coach, very talented coordinator. And, um, I'm really proud of how we finished proud of, um, you know, you know, he put us in position. We we were, we were second in plays per game last year and we were 15th in first downs last year, Mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, the problem is we, we were 112th in fumbles. And, and as a result, we were 121st in red zone scoring, you know, turnovers in the red zone, missed kicks in the red zone. And so that was a very frustrating thing for him. But, man, I'm proud of how Garrett hung in there and, and uh, we got over the hump. And we had some close losses, overtime, double overtime, pick six. You know, the opening game, we, we, we had 250 yards rushing, 250 yards passing, and we got beat for the first time in 128 years of Clemson football. We lose a game uh, when we do that. So it was a, it was a year for uh, everybody just to kind of 
you know, battle through, and we did, uh, and we're in a good spot. So we just got to go and, and keep building on what we've done this spring, have a great summer, um, skills and drills. Uh, coaches are all in a good place, and, and now hopefully we can stay healthy and really uh, build on the foundation that we put in place last year with Coach Riley. So are we really going to put Peter Woods on the edge, Coach? I mean, because, I, again, I'm watching that spring game, and there's names there. I'm like, who is that? Who is 55? Who is, I mean, you you have dudes. I don't know where you get them all, but you got guys making plays left and right on the defensive end. I know that you had some guys that didn't even play, and I'm thinking they're going to put Peter Woods, that big beast, on the edge. I mean, I, I know he's a crazy freak athlete, but is that a spot? I mean, that's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah, he's going. He's going to play. He's going to probably play, you know, everywhere. Uh, you know, he's a guy that that's it. I think you'll see him. You'll see him move around a little bit. Might even play him on offense. Uh, he's a guy that, you know, move around in different spots. He can. He really can play anywhere. Uh, this is a big year for him, and I think a great opportunity to uh, really display his versatility in his game. You know, which would be very beneficial for him moving forward and all that he can do with his skill set. But he can really run. He's powerful and strong um but you know coming off a great freshman year he and tj parker but as you mentioned i mean we got guys i mean listen k part you know he's been a guy that's been around here are these kids have stayed and they just keep getting better peyton page trey williams yeah. you know we got steph island green big big burley who who would have helped us last year but got hurt had the red shirt uh so we've got a good group we feel like we've got good depth but peter gives us a, a little something at the end that's a little different and, uh, and then we like the young players there and Hoffler and, and, and Jaheim Lawson. Um, you know, those guys are, are, are coming. Yeah, there's no question about that. At least look that way that spring game. Uh, before we let you go, uh, I mentioned the all-in ball, and I hated not being able to get there. A, I've only now missed two of these things. Um, but you and your wife have done such a phenomenal job, and so many people were involved to make that thing cool. Uh, and for folks that don't know, uh, if you can just kind of give a thumbnail sketch of what it did, what the amount of money you raised on the night, it's such a phenomenal event. Yeah. It's really a, uh, everybody should be able to attend something like this. It's such a great idea. Fantastic. Yeah, it's, it is. I appreciate it, Pat. It's a great night. We missed having you there. Um, you know, we, we started our foundation back in 2010. And so, you know, this is kind of the Super Bowl night to, for the foundation and basically we raise the money and we give it away. Uh, that, that's just that really that simple. And I think, um, after this past all in ball, we're going to be right at $13 million, uh, you know, right into this community and, uh, to, to all the, the areas that we, first of all, the, the grant program, there's probably 300 different organizations that fall within the, the, you know, critical health and education needs, which is the mission of the foundation. And, you know, we have specific things with breast cancer and the calming mister and the Clemson life program and, and so forth. But, um, you know, this money is, is, is so beneficial to so many wonderful organizations that, that do amazing things throughout this community and serving so many people in so many different areas. Like I said, whether it be health, uh, issues, educational needs, you name it. So, uh, yeah, we raised, uh, $1.59 million, uh, wow. that, that Friday night before the spring game. And, um, you know, it'll be a blessing to a lot of people, but I appreciate uh, you, uh, always supporting us in that. Well, I mean, it's such a cool event and, and, you know, a lot of times coaches and, and their wives do a lot of stuff that doesn't get publicized. You're not doing it from the publicity. It's just a feel good giving back. It's kind of the mission of all of us uh, to give back and make your neighborhood a better place to live. And, uh, you and Kat have done a phenomenal job and so many people, or involved with that. So congratulations on that. Listen, we look forward to seeing you. We always appreciate your time and uh, tell the family, I know you got a big wedding. You got to get planned up here pretty soon. So, you know, you know, get to work, understand your role. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got it. Hey, I appreciate y'all. Good to see y'all. Be good Thanks, coach. coach.